Hello, this is Steve from Beto's Leatherworks. Today's project is these brand new WM Morvi boots. They are made in Canada. They're pretty cool boots. They're 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 not bad. Um, they're not badly made. But we're going to kind of customize them a little bit as per customer's request. We're going to remove everything from the bottom. We're going to add a 360 welt. This is a 270. For those of you who don't know, 270 welt starts from here, goes to the toe, come back to the inside of the other ankle. 360 goes all the way around. We're going to do a split welt. We're going to do a leather heel rand, which is this piece right here. So the base of the underneath the sole. Um, leather heel blocks, JR soles, dovetail heels, and do some staining on the bottom and uh, make them look you know, special to what the customer's request was. All right, so let's get started. These boots are for Mario from Canada. Mario. All right, so lately I've been getting a lot of 360 conversions, 360 degree wealth conversions. I've got, I think another two pairs. I've got this pair of indie boots that we're doing. This pair of indie boots that we're doing. We converted the white stitches into, into black stitches. Basically this is what it looked like. Let me hide the ticket real quick to make sure that doesn't give any information. That's what it was and that's what it is now. So I'm gonna try to see if I can finish all three pairs at the same time because we gotta get them done, you know? something that's been sitting around for a while and, and my schedule is kind of getting backlogged again which is not cool but we'll get it done this assembly time now realistically can i use these can i save these heels i mean they're not bad i mean they're not bad i don't think they're going to get damaged we might be we might be able to salvage them These are cool heels. The Vibram soles, you know, they're they're readily available. I don't know if I can. I'd have to find a pair that was exactly same shape as this one to be able to see if I can salvage it or reuse it. You know, so it would be kind of tough to do that. Some guys cut these uh, nails off. I like to push them through and pull them out. They're basically nailed from the inside. All right, let's continue. Another day, another makeover. Stabbing myself. It wasn't fun. I was half asleep trying to work and then I woke up. Yes, definitely I woke up. Hmm, not too bad. Now, when I was explaining in the beginning that we were going to put a leather heel rand. Well, this is what I was referring to, this piece back here, okay? When the welt doesn't go all the way around, you've got this piece, it's called the heel rand. Now, I spoke incorrectly because we're putting a welt all the way around, so there's no use for a heel rand. So, forgive me. I know somebody's going to say, hey, man. There's no heel rand in the 360. Well, I'm out of here. So just to correct myself, okay. Uh, now this is it's not bad shank. We'll save this for another project, another job, and um, we'll put a we'll put the heavy rib shanks these suckers in. Three rib shank is what they're called. 
and it's a little bit more beefier, sturdier shank. Now the welt is put on with a chain stitch Goodyear welt machine. Chain stitch meaning that it's one thread, right? It loops with within itself and it secures it. That's why we can take this and literally pull it pull it off. Okay. It's not like a saddle stitch where it's got two threads going in and out. It's just a single thread. That's why it's called a chain stitch. It's, con yeah, it's connected like a chain, I guess. I don't know what the hell it's called, chain stitch. Remove the old cork and clean it up. Now if you look here, there's a fishing line. You see that? There's a lot of like staples right there holding that fishing line in. And what that fishing line is, you have it on this side too. So it's a machine where, where they take, where literally they take a fishing line and pull it across the toe to get rid of the wrinkles here. They'll pull it real tight and staple it there. That way it stays in position here so you can put the welt on. Some manufacturers used to use metal wire. Some use this. They don't use this too often. But most of the time it's in there. It doesn't, it's not cut out, but it looks like they, they've cut most of it out. But it's not, this isn't acting as anything right now. This is just during the lasting process. So we're gonna take that back apart and continue this piece. This piece is called the gemming. So we can stitch a Goodyear welt all the way around. Let's continue. This is the gemming. That's the canvas that goes all the way around for the welt and the upper stitch stitch on. So basically we're just going to continue it where it's been cut off. You guys get the idea, right? Now, you've got something, a base to stitch a welt onto that goes all the way around. All right, let's continue. This is the split welt that we're going to sew on all the way around. This is the wax thread. I've skived that at an angle so the new one comes on top of the old one. It looks like 
it's going to be flawless connection. Now, earlier this morning, I did the other boot, and I was trying to make an attempt on poking a hole through the welt, and it slipped, and it went in my palm. It wasn't deep, but but it hurt like a biatch. But you know what? It's part of learning the business. Just makes you wake up, you know. These threads here at the back may be wondering what they're for, just to kind of keep the uppers in line with the footbed so it doesn't shift as I'm coming around the corner stitching it. You don't want it, you don't want it to shift on you because then it, it won't line up right. I just realized my watch wasn't working, so I switched my watch. You might, some of you go, hey man, you put a new watch on. Because it was the other one that wasn't working for some reason. It was stuck on 3.30. Yes, I do come early. And that's why in the beginning of the video, I sound a little groggy, right? Some people have noticed that, hey, are you feeling okay or not? Uh, yeah, it's... 3.34 in the morning. What do you look like? I'd like to see some of you guys that early. Probably drool is, is coming down the side of your mouth and you're snoring. <laughs> uh, that's what I should be doing. But you know what? My problem is that when I think about things that I have to do, it, it literally consumes me and and it just, I just can't focus on, just can't focus on much until I finish what that little thing that I'm thinking about. I got to get it done, you know. That's why I have sleepless nights with, with you know, work is kind of chasing me. You know, I got to get it done. I know it's not healthy, but that's just I, it's my habit. I can't, I can't change that, you know. So. It is what it is, my brother. Or my sister. For my, for my lady viewers. All right, so we're going to continue this all the way around the boot. And come here right where we started and to glue it on top of each other. So it's kind of flawless like that. All right, let's continue. So these holes are the original holes that the welt was stitched onto. So we have to follow those holes so we don't poke more holes into the uppers and weaken the leather there. As you can see, I've already created a hole there because I'm holding a camera in one hand. Can't do it both at the same time. There you go. It goes through the same hole. The hook. You put the thread on the hook like that. Pull it through. And that loop right there. Bring the other one through the loop. You pull that tight. You pull that with two hands, obviously. And that secures the welt to the shoe, boot. All right, let's continue.
Yes, sir. You guessed it. More hammer time. So most of the time, most people will do, they'll use their five and one machine I'll show you to squeeze the weld together. I don't like to do that, I'll show you why. This is the five and one machine. The weld is right here. Well, the, you put the weld right through there and you press it, right? And it squeezes the sole and the weld together. But this is what it leaves on the bottom. I hate those marks. Ah, hate those marks. So that's why when you see me after I put the sole on, <clears throat> I hammer it a weld together like this. Basically the same concept, right? But this doesn't leave any marks on the bottom of the sole. Now you can put like patterns on the bottom, the design patterns, those are more controlled. Those, those look a lot better than this crap right there. God, I hate that. Have I told you guys that I hate that? <laughs> Let's continue. All right, here goes nothing. Had some issues right here. Luckily, that's underneath the heel. See that right there? It looks like there's one thread that was missed. So we're gonna have to take care of that. All right, let's continue.
All right, welcome back. We are done with this project. I think it turned out pretty good. Now it's a solid shoe. These laces have gold aglets on them. These are called aglets tips of the laces well thank you for joining me i appreciate it once again so share comment um share comment thumbs up subscribe whatever you got to do to kind of grow the channel we'd greatly appreciate it and um if you guys have any questions email me at beatos at yahoo.com i'll do my best to respond back as soon as i can all right thanks again we'll see you guys again on the next project take care